Hi, this is Tamara from Oogliblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the little bits that make the ducky squish special. To make this pattern, I used two colors of Bernat Blanket. As you can see, I used Bernat Baby Blanket in the school bus yellow colorway and regular Bernat Blanket in the gold colorway. Bernat Blanket and Bernat Baby Blanket are totally interchangeable, so you can pick the colors that you like best and mix and match to make your custom ducky squish. I also used a USL 8mm crochet hook, stitch markers, safety eyes. I used 24mm safety eyes, but you can use whichever size you like. And I used a 10 inch round micro bead pillow to fill the squish. Or you could use fiber fill if you preferred. In the blog post, there is a link to the pillow I used. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at our ducky squish. Like most amigurumi, the ducky squish is made in several pieces that are then sewn or assembled together. We start out by making the top half, which is simply half double crochets worked in a spiral. The octopus squish is a great place to see this section in action. Then we come down here and in the second to last row, we add just a few other stitches, double crochets and treble crochets right into that row to start making these little wings for the side. Then we make the bottom half, which is very similar, just a couple rows shorter. We start, still start in the middle with a magic circle and work in a spiral all the way up and make those same series of stitches so that when we put the top and bottom together, we will match those up and sew all the way around the squish. However, before we do that final seam, we need to make all the other little add-ons and put them together. The eyes are just safety eyes, but if you prefer, you could absolutely embroider those on with some yarn. And if you're going to be giving this to a child under age three, that might be the better solution anyway. So since the wings are built into the top and bottom, the add-ons for this pattern are the beak, the feet, the two little feathers here, which are really just, of course, little loops of yarn that we put right on top, and the cute little tail. So today, we'll go ahead and talk about how to make all of those. While I made the tail in the lighter yellow, I'm going to be using the darker yellow today because I have a lot of it left over after making my squish. So to make our tail, we start with a magic circle. I'm going to take my yarn and come in several inches from the end and go over the forefinger of my non-hook hand twice, just like yarning over. Then I'm going to slip my hook under both of those loops, grab the loop that's furthest back and pull it just under the other loop. Yarn over and pull through, and now my magic circle is locked well together. Now, because this is a fuzzier yarn, I like to go ahead and close up that magic circle just a little bit, because we aren't going to be putting that many stitches into this one. There we go. Then we're going to start with a chain one and a single crochet right in that circle. When we go in the circle, we want to make sure that we also go under that tail so that it's trapped in every one of these stitches in row one. So there's our single crochet. Then we're going to work a half double crochet again, right into that ring, making sure that we trap that tail. So there's our half double crochet. And then we need three double crochets again, all into that ring. So we'll yarn over and go in there for our first one. And then a second one. Get that tail out of the way there. It's trying to come up and join the party a little too soon. There is our third double crochet. And that is it for row one. Even though we started with the magic circle, we're going to be turning and working back across. So we can go ahead and close that up. Just pull on that tail and you might have to do it in a couple little sessions here. We don't want to break the yarn, but we want to pull it till it's nice and closed. And that just gives us a really nice flat section here. And we'll sew this little bit onto our duck when we're finished crocheting the tail. So for row one, we had a total of five stitches and now we're ready for row two. For row two of the tail, we chain one and turn or turn and chain one, however you'd like to do it. And then we're going to work two single crochets in each of the first three stitches. So we go right to that first double crochet there. And we work one single crochet and a second single crochet. Then we do the same thing in the next two. One single crochet and a second single crochet. And then once more, one and two. Then we simply single crochet in each of the last two stitches. So one and two. 
That is how to make the tail. From here, all we need to do is break our yarn and finish off, but we're going to want to make sure to leave a long tail here, at least about a foot or so, so you can use that tail to help along with this tail, sew the tail onto the body. The next piece we need to make for our ducky are the feathers, those two little loops right at the top of the head. So again, I want to come in several inches from the tail, but now I'm going to go ahead and put a slip knot on my hook. Now we start out by chaining eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then we slip stitch in the first chain made. So that means the one all the way back here. Not the last chain made, but the very first one. The one right next to the slip knot. So we just go right in there and put a slip knot. Or excuse me, a slip stitch rather. There we go. So we made a slip knot, chained eight, and slip stitched in that very first chain we made. Then we chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and do the same thing. Come all the way back to that very first chain we made and slip stitch right into that chain. It's fuzzy and slippery, so we might have to kind of pick out that loop there. There we go. And put our slip stitch right in there. And that is really it for those feathers. You can see one's a little bit longer than the other. It makes it kind of cute. Once again, we want to cut our end, leaving a long tail that we can use to sew these on to the top of the body. The next piece you'll want to make for your ducky is the beak. This one you will want to use your darker color for. I'm going to start again by making a magic circle. So I will get my hook in there. There we go. Pull that underneath, yarn over and pull through, and start with a chain one. Then I'm going to work a single crochet in that ring. Once again, I wanna make sure to trap that tail right inside every stitch. There we go. And then I'm going to work six half double crochets in the ring. That's straightened out there, there we go. And again, we want to make sure to trap the tail into each one of those. Now for this part, the beak, we are going to be working in rounds. So as I finish up these stitches, I'm going to make sure to grab a stitch marker and have it ready to mark the first stitch of each of the next few rounds to make sure I don't lose my place. I haven't joined yet, or rather started my spiral, so I won't lose track yet. I can stop and count my stitches. I should have seven total. One single crochet, followed by six half double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the right number of stitches. So I'll want to grab my stitch marker. And now with my stitch marker in hand, I can go ahead and mark that first stitch of the round. And now I can go ahead also and pull that tail close. We are going to be working all the way around for this one in a spiral. So we can go ahead and pull that really nice and tight. If you're worried about the yarn breaking, if it gets to the point where it doesn't want to pull closed anymore, then when you go to weave in this end, you can weave it back and forth around on the wrong side and really close that up just a little bit more. Put our yarn back on our hook here, and now we're ready for round two. To make round two of the beak, we simply work two half double crochets in each stitch around. There were seven in round one, so there will be 14 in round two. Now again, we're working in a spiral, so I have not joined with a slip stitch. Instead, I'm going to just start by half double crocheting right into that first stitch. No need to chain or anything like that when we're working in a spiral. So I'll put that first half double crochet in there, and then I'm immediately going to move the stitch marker on up to this new first stitch of the round. Otherwise, it'll be very easy to lose track of that stitch. So there's our first one, and then we need a second half double crochet in that same stitch. There we go, and then we just continue doing that all the way around. Two half double crochets in each stitch. Now, as you do this, you'll notice that the fabric will want to cup up at you. You can see how it's sort of forming a little bowl towards me here, like I'm almost working from the inside of the bowl. That's fine, that's kind of the effect we want for our beak but we want to be working from the outside. So we just flip that right on over and now we're on the correct side of the fabric. We just need to flip it the other way. But that bowl action, that bowl thing, that's kind of exactly what we want with this one. So I'm just putting two half double crochets in each of these stitches around. You can see it's starting to sort of really get that shape here. 
We've got just another one left. And this is where that stitch marker comes in so handy because when we're just going in a spiral, it looks like we could just keep going. So we always want to have that first stitch marked. There we are. And this is what your beak should look like so far after round two. Round three of the beak, again, we're still working in a spiral, so we don't join with a slip stitch at the end of round two, and we don't chain one at the beginning of round three. We simply start by half double crocheting right in that first stitch again. And so we'll want to move up that stitch marker as well, right into that first stitch. Then we're going to single crochet in each of the next five stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Then we half double crochet in each of the next two stitches, one, and one, and then single crochet in each of the next five. So there's one, and find the next stitch there. Sometimes with the fuzzy yarn, I have to take a moment and look and feel. That's fine. Just take your time with it. There's four and five. And then finally, we half double crochet in that final stitch before our stitch marker. There we are. And this is what it should look like at the end of round three. This is also where you want to take a moment and weave in this end. Again, you'll want to weave it in in both directions to make sure it doesn't come open and to just help hold that magic circle extra closed. You don't have to cut it too short. We can use any extra to help stuff the beak as we finish it up. Now we're ready for row four of the beak. Previously, we're working in rounds, but now we're going to switch to rows, and this one is a little unusual. We have 14 stitches in the previous round, and now we're going to fold it flat like this, tuck that little end in there, and then crochet with single crochets through both of these layers, sort of create that beak shape. So first stitch will go through the next stitch and the stitch we just made. So to make that a little bit easier, I like to grab another stitch marker and find the top loops there of that last stitch we just made, that half double crochet right there. I'm not gonna bother closing that stitch marker, I just wanna have it marked so I can get back in there because this first one kind of sets up all the rest of them and if you can get this one set up right, the rest are easy to do. So first things first, we're going to go in to that first stitch of the round, the one we marked, and then pull your yarn kind of back out of the way here. And we're going to go in to that last stitch we just made from the inside of our beak to the outside, just like that, like we were holding it flat. Then I'm going to go ahead and move both of these stitch markers out of the way, now that my hook's in there, We'll yarn over, pull that loop up and through, and finish our single crochet. And if you want to, you can go ahead and mark that first single crochet right there for row four. Then we simply continue that way all the way across. We find the next stitch here on this side, and we go all the way through. Find that next stitch on the other side. Just squeeze them right together, like a little sandwich. So there's our second one. Find the third one. Once you get going, it really, they line up so nicely. There's four and five. And my little end's trying to escape, so I'm gonna tuck that right back in. There we go. And six. And the last two are right next to each other, so they're a little funky, but you just get your hook in there as best you can and make single crochet number seven. Then at the end of row four, all you need to do is break your end and weave it in. For this one, we don't need to leave long tails for sewing. The last bits left to make for our ducky squish are the feet. So you want to go ahead and make two of these. We're going to start with a long tail for sewing and make a magic circle. Get this put together here. Now this is going to be a row, so we're not going to join with a slip stitch and we're not going to be working in a spiral. We chain one and work three single crochets into the ring. So again, we want to make sure to go over that tail. So there's one. I'm going to go ahead and pull my finger out now that that's locked together there. And two and three. 
then, as I say, we want to go ahead and close up that tail. We're not going to be joining or anything. It just gives us a really nice point at the back of our foot. Then we're ready for row two. To begin row two of our foot, we're going to turn and make a chainless starting double crochet in the first stitch. If you'd prefer, you can instead chain three or do your favorite double crochet substitute. I'm going to start by pulling up my loop about to the height of a double crochet, maybe just a hair taller. I'll secure the top of that loop with my finger right on the hook, yarn over with the loop itself, and insert my hook right in that first stitch. Then I'll yarn over, pull that loop up and through the stitch, then yarn over again, pull through that loop and behind the yarn over, then yarn over one more time, and finally pull through both of those last two loops. You can see it wasn't until the end when I released that loop. Then we're going to work three double crochets into the next stitch. So we find that center one, work one and two, Oop, there we go, and three. There's our third double crochet. Then finally, we just work one double crochet in the very last stitch. So row one had three single crochets and row two has a total of five double crochets. To make row three of the foot, we start with a chain one and turn, and then we're going to work a front post double crochet in the first stitch. So to do that, we're going to yarn over and go around the post from the side here of that very first double crochet. Come up on the other side, right in between the post of the first stitch and the second stitch. We bring our yarn across the front of the stitch like this, yarn over, and pull that all the way around. Go ahead and give that a little extra tug. With this chenille yarn, it likes to stick to itself, so we have to give it a little extra pull once in a while. Then we yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two, just like so. Then we work two double, excuse me, two single crochets in the next stitch. So this one's considered worked, we've worked around it. So we find the next stitch, and we put two single crochets right in the top of there, one, and two, and then we front post double crochet around the next stitch. So we find the post of the next stitch there, yarn over. Now we're going to come from the front, just the side of that post, and pop up right on the other side, like so. Again, we bring our yarn across the front of our work, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Now this stitch is considered worked in. So we go to the next stitch and work two single crochets in there. One and two. And then finally, we work one last front post double crochet around that very last stitch. So we yarn over, come in on the side of that stitch. Our hook will come kind of basically right out the side of our work here. So we wanna bring that yarn right around, yarn over and pull up a loop. Give it a little tug there again if you need to and then yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So that is what it should look like at the end of row three. To make row four of our foot, we're going to start again with a chain one and turn, or turn and chain one, whichever you prefer. And now we're going to work something very similar to what we did back here, but we want to keep all our post stitches on this side of the fabric. So now we need to work a back post double crochet. So we're going to yarn over, and then we bring our hook from behind around that first post. So before our hook was in back and it was popping up from the back, now we're going to have our hook in front and it's going to go through to the back of the fabric. So now we can yarn over and pull that loop up and around. This is a little tricky because it's the first one. So we wanna kind of pull that all the way around to the back of the fabric there. Then yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two just like that. Then we single crochet in each of the next two stitches. So that's going to be those two single crochets. We don't want to end up working a single crochet into any of these um, post stitches we've been making. We want to come over here to these single crochets and put one in the next and one in the next after that. And then we back post double crochet around this next stitch. So we yarn over and just take your time and use your fingers and really pull out where that post is. You can see it's that middle stitch right there. So we're going to yarn over, come from behind up on one side of that post and push our hook 
to the back of the fabric on the other side. Then we can yarn over, pull that loop up and through, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Then we single crochet in each of the next two single crochets. So there's one, and one in the next one. There we go. And then we finish up this row with a back post double crochet around that last stitch right there. So we yarn over. Let's go ahead and pull that apart a little bit. Find that stitch where it is, where it wants to be, right there. We're going to go around from behind. That's that chain one. You can include that if you want to, but you don't have to. Pull up that loop. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So this side isn't very exciting, but on our right side, we're kind of maintaining the look of that duck foot. So this is what it should look like at the end of row four. To make row five, we're going to chain one and turn, or turn and chain one, however you like to do it. And we want to maintain these post stitches right here, but we're going to increase just a little bit more in between. So. We start with a front post double crochet around that first stitch again. Pull that loop all the way around there so we try and get that post stitch in front as much as possible. Then we're going to single crochet in the next stitch, which would be that first single crochet there. There's one more. We want to put two single crochets in this one. One and two. That brings us to another post stitch. So we do a front post double crochet around that post stitch. And then the same thing, single crochet in the next single crochet, two single crochets in the next single crochet, one and two. And then finally, double crochet in that very last, or front post double crochet, I should say, around that very last post stitch. There we are. And this is what it should look like at the end of row five. And now we have a total of nine stitches. With round six, we're on the back of our foot again, and I've already made my chain one. I'm going to start again with a back post double crochet around that first stitch. So let's do that again. We yarn over and we bring our hook, swing it all the way around to the front of our work so we can push it through to the back. Yarn over, pull that loop up and through, just like that. There we go. Then we yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Then we're going to work loosely slip stitch in the next three stitches. So that's going to be those three single crochets right there. And we want to loosely slip stitch because we're going to be working back into those stitches. So to do that, what we do is we find that first single crochet right there, insert our hook, yarn over and pull up our loop. And before we just go right away to pull that loop through the other one for a slip stitch, just take a moment and give it a little bit of a wiggle then pull that loop on through for the slip stitch. That will loosen it up enough that we're able to stitch back into it in the next row. So there's one, we need to do that twice more. Go to the next stitch, yarn over and pull up our loop, give it a little, little tug and a wiggle there, and then pull it on through. And then our next one, pull up our loop, give it a little tug, and then pull it on through. Then we back post double crochet around that next stitch. Remember that's our post stitch we've got going right there. So we want to yarn over, find that next post right there, come up on one side around the front and pop out of the back on the other side, yarn over and pull up our loop, then yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two. Then we need to loosely slip stitch in those next three single crochets again. So we find the first one, go in there and pull up our loop, give it a little wiggle, before we pull it on through for the slip stitch. Find the next one, yarn over, pull it through, give it a little wiggle and pull it through. When you do this, make sure that after you finish your stitch, you don't give a yank back on your working yarn. That's a habit a lot of people get into, especially when working amigurumi, where we typically want our stitches to be a little tighter. But for these, like I say, they're slip stitches and we wanna work back in. So try your best not to pull back on the yarn after making those three slip stitches. Finally, we have our last back post double crochet right here. So we yarn over, find that post. You can use your fingers to really pull it out there if you'd like. Once again, you can skip over that chain one if you'd like. Get your hook in there, yarn over, pull that up and through, 
and finish it up just as a double crochet. There we are, like so. So this is the bottom of our foot and the end of row six. Row seven is the last row to make our foot. So we start with a chain one and turn and get back to the front of our foot here. Here we're going to start with a front post double crochet around that first stitch again. So you can kind of pull that nice. I like to just do a little bit of what I call hand blocking, especially with Bernat blanket and really sort of straighten out those stitches to make them easier for me to find. There's that front post or back post double crochet from the previous row. We want to go right around there. Pull the loop around and make our first stitch. So there is our front post double crochet. Then we're simply going to slip stitch in those next three stitches. Those are those slip stitches that we made before. This time we don't have to do it loosely because we're not going to work into them again. So we just find the first one and we can go ahead and make a nice tight slip stitch there if we want. Whatever level of tightness makes you happy. We just want sort of that webbed look to really emphasize on our foot here. So we've done three slip stitches. That brings us to another post stitch here. So we want to front post double crochet around that one maintain that look here and then slip stitch in those next three slip stitches again one two three and then finally front post double crochet right around that very last post stitch there there we go so you can see now we've got a little bit of a dip there we can even use our fingers to help really emphasize those post stitches and make them stand out a little bit more but now we can break our yarn and weave in this last end because we'll be using the first end of our feet to sew them onto the duck. So with all those pieces made, it's finally time to assemble our duck. The first thing I like to do is add the feathers at the top. Here it's a little easier to see in the dark, but I did use the lighter yellow to match the body of the duck himself. However you'd like to do it, again, it's your project, it's up to you. But you can see I just sewed it right to the center of that very first round of the top. Very easy to find the center of the magic circle and sew it in right there. I just use the tail ends to sew it into the top half of the body with a yarn needle. Now that said, I did notice after it was all finished, my feathers keep falling over. So learn from my mistake and take a couple of extra stitches. You can see here, I just sewed right in the middle. What I should have done is taken a couple extra stitches on either side of the feathers to help those stand up a lot better. Again, you'll want to do this before you stuff your duck, when you just have the pieces, before you've added any stuffing. It's going to be much easier to get to the inside and sew all this stuff on. So first step, sew these feathers on and add a couple extra stitches that I should have done to make sure they stand up nice and tall. The next step is to add the safety eyes. Again, you'll do this before you stuff and do the final seaming of the duck. Or you can use embroidery, whatever you prefer. I went up maybe two rows before the last round here, wherever you like to be, and you want to make sure that you use the wings or the long tail on the other side to help you center those eyes and make sure they're nice and forward facing. The next step is to sew on the feet. Here you can see these are the bottom of the feet sewn onto the bottom half of the body. Again, before the bottom half and the top half are sewn together so you can get on the inside and really sew those on. You'll see I made sure those post stitches, they want to face up on your duck, so it should be the bottom of the feet facing you as you sew them on. You'll also notice I only sewed on the back half of the foot, leaving the front half loose. I used the magic circle again to sort of measure out about two rows, and I made sure that they were both sort of facing out. As you can see, all my lining up wasn't always perfect, but I think he turned out pretty cute. So you can use the wings again to help you center those a little bit and help those feet face out just sort of splayed out like duck feet. Then I sewed on that tail. Here's the one we made together and here it is attached to the duck. So you can see having those two ends right there makes it very simple to just sew right on. I sewed this to the bottom half of the duck. Right there's the seam. So it's just a row or two down from that seam. And again, I kind of used the feet to help me line it up as well as the wings to help make sure and try and get that as centered as possible. Then the final thing to do is line up the beak. And this is actually a little bit easier to see in the written pattern where I was able to take some more photos. However, all we do is use stitch markers to attach the beak to the top half of the body centered between the eyes. So then after you've got your beak lined up using stitch markers to hold it to the top half of the body, then you'll want to make sure to insert that pillow ball or the stuffing or whatever you're using to stitch up your duck. 
make sure to match up your stitches all the way around with stitch markers. Not every stitch, but maybe every 10 stitches or so. This will help you make sure that the wings are matched up. You want to make sure your treble crochets are matched up your treble crochets, doubles to doubles, etc., all the way around. Then you can use the long tail left to whip stitch those two layers together and make sure you go through both layers and the beak when you get to the beak layers. I use the whip stitch here and here I used more of a running stitch or a back stitch to go back and forth and make sure that, be that beak is nicely secured. Then I just switched back to the whip stitch to continue all the way around. And then finally, you just weave in that very last end. And that's how to crochet the ducky squish. Once again, you'll find those links you need right in the description. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.